Hey, so uh, this is Turtles again. I'm going to try to keep my shirt on in this video, but I wanted to make a response to uh, Ashton. That's Ashton J. Roth's um, uh, really, I thought, insightful video uh, about um, New York Magazine's recent article about um, transgender kids. I pretty much agree with everything uh, he says about the article, so I'm basically just going to be adding to a couple of points and then um, uh, adding a few additional sort of observations or problems, mostly, that I had. Uh, with the article. First of all, I totally agree um, with the issue about the sort of like uh, <laughs> general like class and scope of people that um, were represented um, uh, in the article. Like I think the issue about race, the issue about like economic privilege, the issue about like family politics um, are all really critical things um, and it is you know really easy for uh, you know stories about these issues to cover just, you know, the whitest, the richest, and, um, you know, the most progressive um, people um, in their articles. So I think that's a major uh, thing. Like, you know, we, have, we should be paying attention to the demographics and, like, who gets represented in these stories that claim to be, you know, about transgender kids. What transgender kids are we talking about? I think because of the focus of the article, you kind of have one of the problems that um, Ashton mentioned that is sort of built in, in that, you know, it's an article about trans kids in particular, so it's only kind of by definition going to cover, um, you know, those who came out of a young age. Um, and I guess there, there would be a bias towards parents that were at least somewhat receptive to the point where they'd be willing to talk about it in a news article. So I guess, like, I will say it's kind of hard to see how to get around those problems, but I found really problematic the newspaper, or the um, articles use of the term true transgender. For me, this is like shades of true transsexual, which has been a term that has basically been used to marginalize trans people that don't fit all kinds of notions about, you know, what the gatekeeping, um, you know, cis, mostly cisgendered uh, medical and psychological communities um, demand <laughs> from trans people for just for our basic recognition. Um, so I found the use of that term incredibly problematic. It was basically applied to, you know, kids who want to trans kids who want to fully transition and are not just sort of gender variant. But frankly, I thought transgender was an umbrella term. I mean, we can argue about the use of the term, but in any case, I think putting true uh, before anything <laughs> beginning with trans is really problematic. Ashton mentioned the use of pronouns, and um, it's interesting because I actually found um, the use of pronouns um, in the artic article to be pretty good. I mean, better than a lot of the articles I've seen. We can, you know, do, we can disagree as far as, like, you know, what level is uh, acceptable. I agree that there was, like, perhaps a little bit gratuitous uh, use of, like, birth names and so on. But then I wonder, like, this is messing with my head a little bit right now, like, to what extent, you know, if someone make, if a reporter makes up, uh, uh, you know, fake birth name, uh, you know, as well as a fake, you know, current name, uh, for the sake of an article, like, is that inappropriate? Like, I'm just trying to discuss, you know, <laughs> this is an, this is an open question, I think, but, uh, you know, it's, it's still a little bit problematic, I guess, even if it's not their actual birth name. Another interesting trend that showed up, uh, twice in the article, once I thought in a very positive way, and once in a not-so-positive way, to put it mildly, um, <clears throat> the author seemed to be interested in, like, um, presenting, um, feminine, interests and presentations and so on, um, as, you know, seem to be making a huge push for that as no more, you know, artificial or contrived than masculine um, interests and presentations, which I think in general is a fantastic instinct. And like, you know, we should be talking a lot more about this is actually a big issue, um, you know, for cis women and, and doubly so for trans women. So I really appreciated the author's, um, you know, putting this picture of like, you know, Molly, who's a young trans girl's, you know, obsession with Hannah Montana and like decking out her room and, you know, all of that regalia uh, as no more, again, conventional or artificial than her brother's, you know, sports regalia and so on. Because um, really, I mean, they're equally gendered, but, you know, <laughs> is anyone more, you know, more conventional or more gender normative? No, of course not. You know, they're just, you know, they're just being kids and, you know, happen to have gendered interests. So I found, I, I appreciated that. Um, what I did not so much appreciate was, and I have to read this, uh, cause it's just outrageous, is at the bottom of page three, um, again, perhaps in a, you know, a similar vein of trying to question masculinity or something, uh, the author says, um, <laughs> describes the gender presentation of, of, you know, trans boys on YouTube as macho posturing that's as conventional and false as the femininity they meant to escape. Honestly, like, that's not the author's call to make, like, perhaps he was struck that way. I mean, maybe I'm taking this really personally, but like, you know, maybe the author was struck that way, but 
you know, unless he's like personally interviewed, you know, the young men in question and they are like, you know, honestly, masculinity does feel kind of conventional and false to me. Like, he's just not in a position to make that claim. So I found that a little bit unnecessary. <laughs> Finally, there's the issue of um, hormone blockers and how they uh, are presented. Not, I feel like not just in this article, but in other articles too that I have read. I feel like um, the author in general, authors I should say, like present, they give the parents a whole lot of credit and a whole lot of forbearance. And generally, like I think play up the extent to which one could really describe hormone blockers as like, controversial or like, you know, a big, like a big dilemma to be faced by any parent in any way. I mean, the, honestly, the main like dilemma that I could see with the, you know, the administration of hormone blockers would just be that, you know, they're exorbitantly expensive. So that could present a real obstacle for some families. But as Ashton remarks, like, <laughs> that doesn't seem to be like the one thing that they, the article does not actually bring up, you know, that doesn't seem to be an obstacle for these families that we're talking about. Um, so, you know, honestly, I mean, we're talking about puberty. This is an irreversible biological process. It can be really difficult for any teenager or, you know, young person. Not, we're not even always talking about teenagers these days. You know, can be really difficult for any young person, but can be devastating and traumatic for someone who, like, sees these changes going on and feels they're, like, fundamentally wrong. Um, I mean, I know puberty was, like, a horrible and devastating period in my life, you know, for reasons that I couldn't even understand because I just, transgenderism was not on my radar, right? different era. Um, so, um, you know, so I think I'm really frustrated when articles like present, you know, this, this drug, which seems to have, you know, very few side effects that are, we currently know about, which is basically just a means of delaying this puberty in honor to, you know, in, in order to preserve your child's uh, bodily autonomy and like ability to make choices that will affect the rest of their life. I mean, you know, puberty is only somewhat reversible and honestly no one should have to go through that even if it were fully reversible so um you know <laughs> waiting a couple of years to go through puberty in an age when kids are going through puberty earlier and earlier is i i just i can't understand in what universe this is like a controversial thing and the article gives a whole lot of time to voicing parents concerns um, about, you know, the possibility that their children might want to modify their bodies in some way, you know, and like disrupt the perfect natural <laughs> balance that, you know, we're all, we're all endowed with, you know, from, you know, by destiny from the beginning. Um, and, you know, the, the, their concern about gender roles and how those are playing into to everything. And I mean, if you read uh, the comic section, which I don't recommend, <laughs> um, as I did, you'll find these concerns just amplified, just repeated over and over again, um, you know, uh, gender roles and like the sexualization of children came into play in the comment section over and over to a nauseating extent. And you know, these are issues to be sure. Like, yes, body modification is not, it's a difficult thing. It can be a painful or costly thing. Um, and you know, gender roles are a real issue. I you know, fundamentally disagree with, you know, uh, the kind of ridiculous marketing that goes on the kind of ridiculous, like, a cult a culturization and just like forced gender norms. Like, obviously, these are horrible things. A sexualization of children. You're like, yes, this exists. This, this is happening, you know. But why we should feel the need to, you know, doubt kids' instincts um, is just a little bit beyond me, especially when, you know, a lot of trans people, you know, younger and older, have given a lot of thought and t time to, you know, thinking about gender norms, thinking about societal pressures, um, and, you know, maintaining a gender identity in the face of all of those things. I mean, I won't say I've, I've never been there myself, but at this, you know, at this point in my life, the fetishization of the natural, quote unquote, in lefty culture, and just the kind of cisgender privilege, privilege that allows people to, to talk about gender identity as though it's no big deal and chalk it all up to gender norms and all societal influences, it's just, it's sickening. I mean, it just makes me exhausted. Um, and I just, I wish, I mean, I understand it's natural for, you know, a cisgender reporter to identify with, to focalize, to bring out the interests of the parents in question in any of these articles. But, you know, if you're writing an article about transgender children, would it be that hard to actually let them speak for a change? Frankly, I thought the best part of the article was when they like quoted Isaac, when they let him speak for himself. And that's fundamentally what I would like to see more of in these articles in the future. For folks who are interested in, uh, you know, these issues, the representation of trans and um, non-binary um, people in the media, I would definitely recommend um, checking out a link uh, below that I found a couple of days ago. Really good radio program on the topic.
Anyway, thanks, Ash, and take care, everyone.